In this video, I'm going to tell you what is the best guide camera for your particular setup. Now, if you think you already know the answer to this question, I would encourage you to watch this video to the end because in late 2020, some new software developments came about which have changed one of the major metrics that cause us to determine what camera to get for guiding and what camera not to get for guiding. Now give me one minute here for those of you who don't understand what guiding is and how it works. So basically, because a sensor can only be read out once, okay, we can't take sections of the sensor and read it multiple times while the rest of the sensor is read out for a long duration of time. We basically have to have two imaging cameras. And this bottom timeline here basically represents our main imaging camera. And let's say it's taking 300 second or five minute exposures. And then on the top here, we have our second camera, which is taking very short little two second exposures over and over and over again. Now, this right here is our star field. We can see the orange outline kind of shows the main imaging cameras capturing our big high resolution picture, which will hopefully look really good. And this little purple dotted outline kind of represents the field of view of our guide scope. And the guide scope is essentially watching the stars in there. And if the stars move at any time, like let's say during this point here, the star moves up a little bit, what will happen is the software will read that and it will determine a compensation move that the mount will have to make so that it will be moved back to keep the star in the exact same spot so that this entire duration here, this long exposure, doesn't get messed up. In the old days, we told you three things, okay? First off, the camera had to be a mono camera. Mono cameras are much more sensitive than the same sensor with a bare pattern over it, and that's because we're not blocking two thirds of the light that's reaching each pixel, okay? The next thing that we told you is that the pixel size, okay, based on its field of view relative to the main imaging camera, had to be a one-third ratio. In other words, if we take into account the focal length of our main imaging camera and the focal length of our guide scope, okay, the main imaging camera could have pixels that were three times smaller than the guide cameras. And that's because the centroid calculation detection methods that are used in guide equipment or guide software are actually able to detect the centroid point 10 times smaller than each pixel that's actually on the center. It's pretty cool how statistics work. Now the last piece of advice we'd give you is that the sensor, okay, could actually be very, very small. This is what's changing. Now ZWO makes three different types of guide cameras. In my opinion, none of them are a fit for today's software. The first one is this one right here. This is a 120 mm, okay? The next one is a 290 mm, which I have. I really like this camera. It was great in the old days. And then the last one is one that I don't have because I don't think it's worth the money that it costs. That's the 178 mm. The 178 mm is actually designed for something like this. This is an off axis guider. It actually goes in the imaging train and it uses the same scope. It just has a prism here that picks off a bit of light so that we can, you know, use the main imaging scope to kind of like to guide with, okay? We're just picking off a little bit of light before it reaches the main sensor, hopefully without obstructing the main sensor, okay? Now, I have one bone to pick with the 178, and that's that the 178 has a very large sensor. It's only two megapixels. The pixels are huge in it. But if you look at the hole in these off-axis guiders, it's so tiny that the light coming out of this thing doesn't fully illuminate a 174 mm sensor, okay? Because the sensor is way bigger than the imaging circle, or at least the projection circle of their off-axis guider. Now, a ZWO does make a bigger one, which may do a better job, but I know this one right here, which is, <clears throat> it's this one in this package right here, <laughs> it definitely does it. And I've actually seen some guys on cloudy nights, they'll actually take a drill and they'll drill that hole and make it bigger, <laughs> which is a little scary to me, but more power to them. So here's what you want to look for in the best sensor to take advantage of multi-star guiding. You still want a mono sensor. You still want to have the right pixel size and scale, okay? But what you want is a larger cut of that sensor. In other words, a bigger one, which also has more pixels. 
So these two right here are a good example. So we've got the 290 back here, and this is the 178mm, which by the way is the one that I recommend the most. Bang for buck. These two, they have fairly similar quantum efficiencies, fairly similar read noise, fairly similar pixel size, but this guy has a sensor in it that's about four or five times bigger than the 290. Now, when I swap these two back and forth on all the exact same equipment, the 178 gives me about 20% better total error in my guiding. 20% improvement in guiding, that's a big improvement. Simply because this guy has a larger field of view and he can sample many, many more stars. I know this guy typically picks out 15, sometimes more stars, whereas the 290, which is only a two megapixel camera, this guy's a six megapixel camera, the 290 can only pick out maybe at most eight or nine, okay? So, larger sensor is what you want now that multi-star guiding is here, okay? Now, the ultimate sensor would actually be a planetary camera that ZWO makes called the 183, which, ironically enough, is actually the same sensor as this guy. It's just a larger cut of that sensor, okay? It's a one-inch sensor, whereas this right here is a one to one-eighth or something like that. And you actually look at the amp glow on these two sensors, and <laughs> they're actually exactly the same because they're, they're in the same family, okay? They're using the same technology, the same production types, and the same architecture in the circuitry and so forth, blah, blah, blah. I could nerd out for you in quite a while on this. But yeah, a 178mm, in my opinion, best bang for buck. It actually costs close to the same amount as the 290, and it's a much, much better camera. If you use this one, I guarantee you will get much, much better guiding. Like I said, I saw a 20% improvement using all the same gear. So, that's the best camera. All right, bonus section of the video, the future. Okay, so this is the present, okay, what we've been talking about in this video. I'm gonna tell you now that in the future, there's new technologies coming out there that are gonna totally eliminate the need for a guide camera or an off-axis guider altogether, okay? And the cool thing is that some of this technology is actually right around the corner. Now, if you watched a recent video that I did with Rob Trek, it's over an hour long, but we basically talked about some of the new sensors that are available in four thirds, okay, that Olympus might put in their next camera. One of the interesting technologies that has appeared in a new sensor, in particular the 472 sensor, is that it has basically multi-channel systems in it, in which the circuitry essentially allows you to actually divide the sensor up into portions and read out different sections at different rates, okay? And what's really cool about this is that means is that in the future, we could get a camera that has, you could designate a large portion of the sensor to take long exposure and then have maybe a strip across the side or across the top, or maybe even just a little section in the corner that is taking these shorter exposures and taking these little samples so that the software can basically watch the movement of the star and make corrections. And what would be really awesome is if this could actually be implemented right into the sensor, basically completely sidestepping the mount altogether, which has always been something that was mechanically complicated and just made things really expensive. But yeah, this is stuff in the future. Who knows when we'll see it, it might be 10 years from now, but mark my words, it's coming. We will someday be freed from the guide camera or the off-axis guider, which has always been a pain in the butt anyways. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. I have an Instagram, account out there called Grimshdod, which is where I kind of post my pictures. If you want to follow me there, I'd appreciate it. 